It is good to see you here tonight. Uh, we do actually have some people here, most of you probably online tonight. Uh, it is a beautiful day today in the 60s, maybe early se uh, low 70s. Uh, can't count on that every Wednesday in December in Oklahoma. But anyway, we do appreciate uh, your faithfulness. And so for those of you who are online tonight as well, uh, we, we're going to share some announcements and we'll have prayer and then we'll get into our Bible study and then we'll share with you some prayer requests at the end. Um, uh, as far as announcements, we're uh, basically winding down here in uh, December. Uh, this coming Sunday uh, will be uh, the 13th of December, so we'll be having our Bible study uh, and uh, morning worship uh, Bible study at 9, morning worship at 10.30, and then, um, let's see, we do, uh, we do not have anything scheduled for the 13th. Now, what we are looking on the 20th in the evening, we, you know, we've been having morning services, obviously not doing evening, but on the night, on the evening of the 20th, or actually the afternoon at 4 o'clock, we're supposed to be having a Christmas music time at First Baptist, and we're encouraging people who want to sing they can do a solo duet trio I tell people I sing a solo solo that you can't hear um, and then for some people that I won't mention they uh, they're going to sing on a hill far away uh, so that'll help people out uh, but if you'd be interested in um, in singing in some way shape or fashion something Christmassy or whatever you need to see Brother Matt this coming Sunday when he's here uh, for services, and he's going to be gathering all of that together. And that'll be Sunday the 20th at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, okay? Uh, so, And then, of course, um, we always have our traditional Christmas Eve candlelight uh, Lord's Supper service here at our church. We will do that on Christmas Eve, 5 o'clock in the evening. And uh, we'll have a great time together. We can social distance well uh, within our church uh, auditorium. And uh, we feel like we can continue to do things uh, and keep people healthy. Uh, but obviously, as you know, there we have uh, several more uh, who are dealing with the virus. And uh, so uh, we'll share some of that information here in a little bit. Um, I think as far as the announcements, that's everything that I need to uh, share with you. In case some of you were not able to be here for Melanie Cumbie's memorial service, any time, you know, a Sunday morning service or a special service like that we've been doing uh, Facebook Live, you can always go on our YouTube channel and see any of our previous services. So uh, if, you would, if you happen to have missed Melanie's service, uh, it's on there. You can go to the Facebook page, Grove's First Baptist Church. Uh, Brother Earl stuck around till uh, this past Monday. We were able to um, eat lunch with him as a staff and uh, had a good time together. And he is headed on back down. He's going to spend a couple of days in Dallas with some cousins and then will eventually go back down to Waco. So uh, remember him in your prayers. Uh, this is... This is really the challenge for him because um, he had the graveside service there in Floyd Ada, Texas, but this was kind of the one where, uh, you know, he came back here to have the service. So he's going home and a lot of transition, a lot of adjustment for him. So pray for him if you would tonight. Uh, we will certainly mention him. Um, and then, of course, others that we will mention to you tonight here in just a little bit. Uh, one of our church members, uh, Vera May, who's very faithful, 90 years of age, still blowing and a-going, teaching Sunday school. Uh, she has come down with COVID. Uh, so has Darlene Cecil. So we need to remember both of these ladies tonight and just say a special prayer for them. Also, um, uh, could be possibly, a, uh, there's a possibility that Charlene Pritchard, who is down in MD Anderson in Houston, may be watching. And I told her that we would be praying especially for her. They're trying some uh, chemo, uh, some new chemo, or, or trying a, a smaller dose maybe 
uh, to help her not be as sick. So, Charlene, if you're listening tonight, we want you to know that we love you and we're praying for you. Uh, some of the others we will mention here in just a little bit at the end of the service. So, um, again, thank you for being uh, with us tonight. We've been doing a um, series on being victors of the Lord Jesus Christ, overcoming uh, sin and toxins that will poison us as believers. And so we're going to look at tonight uh, what we would call uh, kicking habits, bad habits out of our lives, okay? And uh, all of us have them, so let's be honest when, before we start this series, before we start to study tonight. So let me uh, begin us with a word of prayer, so let's bow together for prayer. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come together tonight. Lord, I thank you for these who are faithful. Lord, we even have guests here tonight. Thank you, Father, for uh, just the opportunity to come together, study your word, to fellowship together. And Lord, I pray that you would keep us safe. I pray, Father, that you would be with those who are online tonight. There are many, uh, several people who are watching on Wednesday nights from home. And so, Father, I just pray that you would be with them. Uh, Charlene, tonight, we pray for Tina Henry and some others, Lord, who have uh, been going through uh, extended treatments uh, with cancer. We're just praying, Father, for uh, the healing that only you can give. So, Father, you minister to these and to others that we will mention uh, a little bit later. Uh, Father, we pray for our country tonight. Uh, Lord, um, regardless of uh, the circumstances of who our leaders are, we know that we are a divided country, that we find ourselves polarized, and even this virus has polarized us in, to some extent. So, Father, we pray uh, for our country, for our leadership. Lord, give us people who are willing to sacrifice their own selfish desires for the good of the country. And, Father, give us people who love Christ, who would be willing to serve him in that capacity. Lord, we pray for leadership not only from a national level, but state level, even to our local level. We just pray, Father, that for those individuals who are in places of authority, that they would take their responsibilities serious. Father, help us tonight as a church family. We pray again, Lord, for our congregation as we are here tonight in our auditorium. We have our children's uh, teen kid ministry. We have our youth uh, going on, and Lord, I pray that you would keep them safe tonight and the workers. And again, Father, we just pray for those who are sick, those who have recently um, uh, passed away. Lord, I lift up the Saltz family, Mary Saltz, who was one of our church members who was in Grandwood, passed away after church Sunday. And so, Lord, we will be dealing uh, with a, a graveside service tomorrow morning pray for her family tonight as they are grieving her loss so father you just be real to us help us to learn to trust you more and more each and every day father we love you and we thank you and we praise you and it's in christ's name that we pray amen all right if you would tonight turn to first corinthians chapter 10 first corinthians chapter 10 and again, we're going to be looking at some different, um, different things that cause us problems. We talked about the toxin of envy last week, and now we're going to deal with what we would call bad habits. And so I want to share uh, this Bible study with you. saw a cartoon this past week. And it was a sad bird, and the bird was saying, I was going to quit all of my bad habits. I really was. But then it occurred to me that no one likes a quitter. Now, I'm not sure that that's a good uh, out for bad habits. But anyway, uh, when you think of, you know, habits come good and bad, don't they? You know, we have some good habits that we do. My uh, mom especially uh, convinced me that brushing my teeth every day uh, was a good thing. Uh, sometimes when I was a small kid, I didn't quite understand that. 
the idea of taking baths and showers on a, conti- on a rather continuous basis. You, folks, you'd be surprised. Uh, many of us have gone to Falls Creek, and we have had kids that would not take baths and le- or showers unless we forced them to, you know, and uh, it gets a little, uh, a little smelly uh, uh, from time to time. Uh, but, you know, we have some good habits, and um, we have some habits that are not so good. When you came in tonight, are you sitting in a seat that you normally sit at? Do you have a certain seat that you like here in the auditorium? Now, I kind of like your habits on that because, see, I can take roll on Sunday. I can look at some of you and I say, okay, well, okay, uh, uh, no, they're not here today. Uh, or, you know, something like that. Now, some of you mess me around, and you start out in one area, then you start moving around the auditorium. So you're the ones that uh, I have a hard time with, but that's okay. Uh, you have a routine every morning, I'm sure. You get up, do certain things. Um, you know, you just have this routine that you like to get into, and, and you go with. My wife has a, a routine in the morning. I try to stay out of that routine or out of the way of that routine because she's going to work usually. And I, there are certain things that I need to do to help her in order to get out the door. And um, so, uh, you know, I, I try to take care of those. One of the things is take care of the do- taking care of the dog and making sure. And, and she has some routines herself, the, our uh, little Maltese named Jazzy. So uh, we all can get into uh, habits, okay? But there certainly are habits that we can develop that are not good. And so we want to look at some of those tonight. Now I'm going to begin reading in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We're going to highlight some things there and then we'll we'll, uh, hit some other passages. Uh, We're going to go to 1 Corinthians 6 and then over to Ephesians chapter 4. But I'll try to help you with that and and, uh, keep us going here tonight. Uh, So let's begin reading in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Beginning in verse 1, um, I am uh, reading from the New American Standard. And here's what the scripture says. For I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized in the Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink for they were drinking from a spiritual rock which followed them and that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, with most of them, God was not well pleased for they were laid low in the wilderness. Now these things happened as examples to us that we should not crave evil things as they also craved and do not be idolaters as some of them were as it is written the people sat down to eat and drink uh, and, um, and stood up to play. Nor let us act immorally as some of them did as 23,000 fell in one day nor let us try the Lord as some of them did and were destroyed by the serpents nor grumble as some of them did and were destroyed by the store destroyer now these things happened to them as an example and they were written for our instruction upon whom the ends of the age have come therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall no temptation has overtaken you but such as is common to man And God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond that which you are able, but with the temptation will provide the way of escape also, that you may be able to endure endure it. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. Okay? Now, we are creatures of habit. Uh, Habits are good. Habits are bad. Uh, We know that in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25... Uh, The Bible says there that it says not abandoning our own meeting together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day drawing near. We know that attending church, attending worship services, being a part of Bible studies, coming on Wednesday nights, being a part of the ministry of the church, uh, that can develop into habits. Folks, I was grateful to grow up in a Christian home and we were there literally every time the doors were open. My dad was a deacon in the Emmanuel Baptist Church in Skytook. 
My mother was a part of WMU. Uh, I mean, every Sunday morning we were there for Sunday school. We were there for worship. Sunday night, uh, I even knew it as training union, uh, church training, discipleship training, when they changed all the different programs, the names of it. Uh, Wednesday nights, RAs, Mission Friends, GAs, Sunbeams, all of that. I was a part of that, our youth group. The only time I ever really missed church sometimes was uh, I had a job there at the local pizza parlor, and on Wednesday nights every once in a while, he would have to uh, put me in on the schedule because he was a deacon in our church, and sometimes he wanted to go to Wednesday prayer meeting, and he'd say, Jim, we're going to swap out on this, so uh, sometimes you're going to miss youth, sometimes I'm going to miss uh, church, but we'll try to not do it at all. Uh, so when I went to college up here at NEO in Miami, I think the first Sunday I didn't go anywhere and I felt horrible. The first Sunday I stayed in my dorm room, I shut the door, shut the shades, waited till after 12 o'clock to make sure no one realized that I hadn't gone to church. Now, the rest of them probably in my dorm didn't care. But anyway, that was so ingrained in me and by the next Sunday I had found Hudson Creek Baptist Church. And folks, you stay in bed, you won't find your wife. I found my wife at Hudson Creek Baptist Church. So uh, there, there's, a, uh, there's a little uh, moral to the story there. But it was ingrained in me. That's what I'm trying to, to share with you. Uh, reading Scripture, obviously, is a good habit. Uh, some of you have a quiet time. I just spoke to one of my deacons on the, on the uh, phone just a while ago, and he was talking about having his quiet time in the morning before he went out and did some things, and uh, you know, that is certainly a good, habit, a good habit. Helping people in need. We have individuals in this church that seek out and, and try to help people uh, in a time of need. Uh, on the other hand, having habits that are clearly pointed out as sin in the Bible can be damaging to our faith and damaging to our witness. And bad habits can poison uh, or damage our Christian lives. And unless we overcome those bad habits, they will drag us down and keep us from being spiritually mature. So we must take steps to overcome uh, these sinful habits. And again, the first one would be identifying the problem, okay? So we read here in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul here is talking about, he's basically talking about the issues of the people in the nation of Israel when they came out of Egypt. But he's focusing on this subject of idolatry. And folks, if we're not careful, our habits can become idols. They can become something that becomes dear to us. What did Jesus say? Wherever your uh, treasure is, there your heart is also. Um, and so uh, when we become a Christian, uh, God doesn't eliminate the sin nature completely obviously in our lives he puts a new nature there but where there's always going to be the struggle between the old nature and the new nature whichever you feed the most is the one that's probably going to gain control okay and so um we for instance we you know people have had problems uh say with smoking before they became a christian i'm just going to use that as an example so uh, if I'm not trying to pick on anybody. I'll talk about overeating in just a minute to, to include myself in there. Uh, but, you know, you could have a problem with smoking before you became a Christian, and you may still be struggling with it. You may have a critical spirit. You may have a problem with temper. You may have a problem with overeating. We're all vulnerable to sin, and we need to be on guard. And in this passage, Paul identifies these sinful habits as idols, some of them resorted back when things started going tough remember the nation of israel you know he's already parted the red sea uh, for some of them and yet they were they were turning to idols remember the golden calf Mo, uh, aaron fashioned the Mo, uh, the golden calf moses stayed up on the mountain too long and they said well he's gone he's out of the picture so what are we going to do some of them said let's go back to egypt let's let's fashion our idols and here we go and so he gives us a history lesson to encourage his readers in verse 14 to flee idolatry, literally run from it. 
He also gives encouragement in the, ver in the verse preceding in verse 13. And folks, I want you to understand verse 13. Um, there is no superhuman temptation. Now, some of us may think at times, boy, Brother Jim, I mean, the temptation that I've experienced in my life, I just don't seem like I can get any victory over. And by the way, this is not a sin to be tempted. We all are tempted. Jesus was tempted. The sin is when we give in to the temptation. And that is something that our Lord Jesus Christ didn't ever do. Okay, so he says here there's no, there's no superhuman temptation. What does he say? No temptation is over has overtaken you but such as is common to man but then he wants us to understand something god is faithful folks never forget that god is faithful and if he said look and, and then what proceed or what goes comes after that who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able but with the temptation will provide the way of escape also the, the definite article is before the word escape. It doesn't just mean a escape. You're going to find a escape to get out. There is a definitive way of escape that God wants you to get out of this temptation. Provide a way of es the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. And folks, that's a sign of maturity when we begin to say no to those sinful habits, those idols that are in our lives okay God's gonna provide the way of escape have you identified some problem areas in your life tonight every believer has an Achilles heel when it comes to sin there are some I, I, uh, I witnessed to a young man when I was there in Henrietta he ended up coming to know the Lord but he was very honest with me. He said, uh, Brother Jim, he said, uh, he said, I love the taste of beer. I have, in fact, he said, I've, I've been an alcoholic in the past. I don't do the hard liquor, but I love the taste of beer. And, I, and see, folks, I could, I'd rather, I think I'd rather drink prune juice than beer. Beer just absolutely has the most horrible taste. God did not give me a taste for it. Well, this young man named Kirk did. He got a, he got, he developed a taste for it. So even after he was a believer, he was struggling with that. He knew he needed to give it up because it was a crutch. It was something that kept him from being what he needed to be as a, a believer. Okay. And so we all have areas of our life. It, for some, it can be temper. You know, I, I know how to lose my temper. Ask my wife. I know how to lose it. But we must not pleasure in those things that we have problems with, problems with but realize they are destructive to our witness. And many today seem powerless to break destructive habits and their dilemma is a result of forgetting something. That is feeling, filling the vacuum, okay? It's not only identifying the problem, but it's filling the vacuum because once you get something out of your life, you need to fill it, okay? Psalm 119.9 says this, how can a young man keep his way pure by keeping it according to your word? Now, I don't think that's just for young men, by the way. If we want to keep our lives pure, we need to say no to that temptation. What are we going to fill it with? Fill it with his word. Let the power of God's word help you. Uh, impure thoughts must be replaced with pure thoughts. Sinful practices need to be replaced with deeds of righteousness. In Psalm 119, as I just read, verse 9, there are great admonitions. I challenge you, it's the longest chapter in Scripture, but folks, there is tremendous absolute truth that are found there because it talks about the Word of God. And in Psalm 119, 29, it says this, Remove the false way from me, Lord, and graciously grant me your law. The word law, again, back to the idea of God's perfect treasure, his word. 
remove the false way, let me get it out of my life, and then fill it with your truth. If we replace the bad habits with godly habits, we will realize uh, the importance of doing so. And we are creatures of habit, but we can also be not only uh, creatures of habit, but we need to be children of holiness. And that's, uh, you're in chapter 10. Look over at chapter 6 for a moment. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. verses 9 through 12. Before I read that, uh, Hebrews 12.1 12, gives us an encouragement about being holy in this life. Listen uh, to what Hebrews 12.1, it says, Therefore, since we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us rid ourselves of every obstacle and the sin which so easily entangles us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Okay, so there's some encouragement there, but it also tells us that there is some sin that easily entangles us. And by the way, folks, the Christian life is not a sprint. It is a marathon. It's a race, and it's not something that you and I just pick up and do whenever we want to. It is a continuous race until the end. That's why the Apostle Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, hey, I have finished the course. And I hope one of these days you and I can be able to say the same thing in our walk with the Lord. But we've got to get rid of those things that easily entangle us. And there are obstacles and there are sin. First Peter 1.16 tells us, because it is written, you be holy for I am holy. And we know that that term holy means to be set apart, uh, set apart for service, set apart being different. You as a child of God are to be different than the rest of the world. The writer of Hebrews reminds us uh, of these obstacles and sin. So what, what sin entangles you tonight as an individual? Because you see, my friend, I believe that God wants us to have victory over besetting sin. Now, obviously, there's some sin. Uh, some of the sin, I'm using some of the the big ones uh, tonight. Folks, I can drive by a casino and it not bother me. I can drive by, uh, you know, if I lived in, uh, you know, in Las Vegas, I, I think I could, I think I could handle it. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to be pride, prideful about that. I just know that if I ever started with some of those machines or something, I'd get in trouble. So I've just decided I'm not even going there and eating, okay? That's just my own personal conviction. But I can drive by one and not bother me. But I, folks, I, you talk to you. There's some people today that are addicted. They can't go by one of them without. I've shared with you the story years ago about a lady who was an, an alcoholic when, at my first church. And she told me after she came out of the 30-day detox, uh, she said, Brother Jim, it, it is a struggle for me. She said, I can go by a convenience store, and, and literally it's just almost like my car wants to turn and go into the, the, the convenience store. And if she said, if I ever go in and if I ever buy one, I'm going to buy more than one, and, and I'm going to start drinking more than one. And, and the, before she knows it, she would be passed out. She would, and she eventually died of alcohol poisoning at the age of 34. So all of us, struggle with certain things besetting sins now so how are we going to get the victory over that that's why we're talking about victors tonight okay uh, over these toxins that come about every one of us have to deal with something like this all right well victory begins with assessing our habits look at first corinthians chapter six for a moment here this is a great passage of scripture beginning in verse nine and here's what the scripture says or do you not know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor, nor, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers shall inherit the kingdom of God. But notice verse 11. And such were some of you but you were washed, but you were sanctified, 
but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the spirit of our God. And then add on verse 12 there, all things are lawful to be, but not all things are profitable to me. Um, you see, I believe that if we're willing to be honest about our sinful habits, um, we need to talk about the frequency and things like that that come about. I, I was reading, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, get some help here a little bit tonight out of one of the study books. Uh, but let me just share with you a, a, a couple of things. When we, the idea of assessing our habits. The writer says, Paul, Paul wrote, all things are lawful to me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful to me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. To break the mastery of sinful habits, we must understand the nature of the habit. We can begin by first noting the frequency. Keep a log. Perhaps the habit is uh, spending money too freely. A reporting system of money is spent will show what is happening with that habit. In fact, keeping a log can serve, can serve as a t deterrent. Assessing the environment and the situation of the habit is also beneficial. When are you most likely to give in to that habit? Are there certain persons which you tend to lose your temper? Is there a certain time of the day when you feel depressed? Is there a specific time of year when you're more susceptible to yield to a sin? Are you more likely to yield to this sin while you're under pressure? Are you more likely to give in when you are alone? One more question that is worth asking, the writer says, why am I doing this? Behavior is purposeful. Even the most bizarre behavior, when it is studied below the surface, shows a person is, person is doing it for a reason. And whatever that uh, reason is, uh, could be a number of reasons, it is usually uh, the meaning uh, back to the behavior. Okay, so, so what I'm saying here in this particular passage is that we need to assess what is going on as far as the uh, the habit ourselves and, and and then we need to overcome that habit okay and uh first corinthians listen he said such were some of you past tense they fit the qualifications there at the first those were practicing sins those were practicing habits those were dispositions of people who were that way and listen folks the bible's very clear about that sin will not enter into heaven those who have not been transformed by the power of the lord jesus christ uh, will miss heaven none of that uh, that is described there in first corinthians 6 9 uh, and 10 those things will not he and he tells us don't be deceived about it but such were some of you but now you have been washed, you've been sanctified, you've been justified by the Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, assess your habits tonight. Assess when it happens. Assess um, when do you lose your temper. Uh, when it comes to sensual desires, are there certain programs or magazines or things? Uh, folks, we have basically allowed sewers to enter into our homes, let's be honest, uh, the triple X movie place in Tulsa when I was growing up in Skytook was the Capri Theater. It was a drive-in down on, I think it was I-44 just off of uh, 75 there. You know, sometimes there were people who would try to uh, pull off on the side of the road and see if they could find, uh, see the picture because, again, it was a drive-in. But used to you had to go somewhere or used to you had to uh, have a subscription for Playboy to be sent to your home, but now you can have it piped in uh, through the internet or through your cable system, and that really creates uh, problems, okay? Now, so if we're going to overcome these sinful habits, by, we assess them first, we're going to get victory, we've got to see where we're at, then we've got to overcome these sinful habits. Look at Ephesians chapter 4 real quick. Ephesians chapter 4, I'm going to begin in verse 17. 
this is a, a, a really practical passage of Scripture that the Apostle Paul uses to speak uh, to the Ephesian church. And he loved this church. I mean, you can t- see the terms of endearment there. It wasn't like the Corinthian church. Uh, he, he, he obviously knew that he was dealing with a carnal church there in, in, in Corinth. Uh, but the Ephesian church, he, he truly uh, had a, 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 an affection for these people. And yet, here is some of the ad- admonition. Beginning in verse 17, he says, This I say, therefore, and affirm together with the Lord, that you walk no longer just as the Gentiles also walk, in the futility of their mind, being darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them because of the hardness of their heart. And they, having been become callous, have given themselves over to sensuality for the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness. But you did not learn Christ this way. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught in him, just as the truth is in Jesus, that in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit, that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new self, which is in the likeness of God, has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. And then here's some practical things. Therefore, laying aside falsehood, speak truth, each one of you, with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. And do not give the devil an opportunity. Let him who steals, steals no longer, but rather let him labor, performing with his own hands what is good, in order that he might have something to share with him who has need. Let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification, according to the need of the moment that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ has also forgiven you. Folks, the first step in overcoming a difficult or sinful habit involves the awareness or the nature of it. And then we want to look at some steps here to remove, okay, some practical things. So let me give you a few here uh, maybe that can, can help us tonight. Cause, and, and listen, we all struggle with this. It doesn't matter whether you're a pastor, a, te- a Sunday school teacher, music director. It doesn't matter whether you've been in church 40 years, 4 years, or 14 years. All of us will struggle with certain aspects of our life. So let's, uh, help, uh, let's get some help in reversing or removing some bad habits, all right? So number one, put your feelings in a proper place. In other words, don't be dominated by your feelings, There are a lot of people today that are allowing their feelings to control everything that goes on in their lives. Now, it's not that God didn't create us with feelings. We are to live by faith and not by feelings. Your faith is based on facts and not feelings. So if you get up one day and you you wake up and say, man, I just don't feel like being a Christian today, or I don't feel like I am one, aren't you grateful that you're, uh, faith is not based on feeling because it's based on the word of God which says that if you have trusted in Christ maybe you're just having a difficult day don't allow the feelings to manipulate what's going on God's word is our foundation uh, Psalm 42 5 says this why are you in despair my soul and why are you restless within me wait for God and I will again praise him for the help of his presence my God. It's like David is interrogating his own feelings, and he basically says to his feelings, kind of get out of the way. And, uh, uh, you know, I may not like telling the truth at times because it may be difficult, but we, have, we need to do it. You may not feel like going to work, but you do it. You may wake up one morning and feel like you're not a Christian, 
But you are because of a relationship with Christ, and you need to focus in on that. Don't let your feelings dictate to you what you're going to do uh, in your life. Put your feelings in the proper place. Secondly, use your mind and will to follow God's word. And here we go back to Psalm 119.9 where it says, How can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to your word. Folks, we know that many times when it comes to sin, it begins in the thought processes of our mind. That's why the Old Testament and the New Testament talks about the idea of guarding our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. In garbage, out garbage, okay, uh, is, a, is a term. Godly thoughts lead to godly behavior. Use your mind and will to follow God's word. Number three, we need to change the environment that encourages the habit. Okay, Romans 13, 14 says, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh in regards to its lust. Okay, um, you know, if you, if you had a drinking problem, don't go to a liquor store. Don't go to places that are going to encourage it. Don't go to parties where they glorify it. If you have impure thoughts, quit hanging around HBO channel on your cable. Get rid of it. Get rid of the magazines or the music that leads to sensual thoughts. These are just some of the examples. But when he says to put on the Lord Jesus Christ, it's like he's talking about the, the, the robe of righteousness. We need to take off the, the deeds of the flesh, put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision. In other words, make no opportunity. I've shared, I, I think I've shared this with you before, but there was a young man when I was in high school, and uh, we would go from time to time uh, as a group, as a church group, we would go skating in Tulsa. And... Uh, this one particular, uh, he helped with our youth group. He's just a little bit older than we were out of high school. But he didn't go with us one night. We asked him, and he said, I can't go because I grew up in that neighborhood, and that's where I got into trouble. And he said, it's just better for me not to go. Now, it wasn't that, you know, I'm sure he was getting strong in his Christian faith, but he just didn't want to take the chance, okay? And I admired him for that. I remember that being... Uh, something that was important enough to him that he wasn't, he, you know, he was willing to say no to not even being uh, around it, okay? And so we need to have that kind of discipline. So change the environment that encourages the habits, okay? Number four, at the point of temptation, stand firm. And this goes back to 1 Corinthians ten thirteen, folks. There is no superhuman temptation. You do not have to give in. Satan's going to convince you that you, you just might as well give up and give in because it's going to happen. But no, there is the way of escape that is found here. Quote that. Let that be a verse, a life verse to you that helps you to uh, win the battle. Satan deceives us into thinking that we cannot resist temptation. The spirit that lives within you has the power to help you to say no. To the enemy okay at the point of temptation stand firm not alone with the lord stand firm and then number five at the point of failing and by the way you and i are going to fail from time to time a christian is not sinless but he should sin less at the point of failing renew your commitment claim first john 1 9 if we confess our sins he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The Christian's bar of soap. Don't, you know, <clears throat> we need to be serious about our sinful habits. But folks, we're going to fail at times and we need to just renew our commitment to the Lord. He already knows what we're dealing with. He already knows uh, our mindset. We just need to say, Lord, I, I, you know, I, I messed up. I failed you again. I ask for forgiveness. I want to start anew. And listen, we have an advocate with the Father, 1 John 2, 1 says, who intercedes on our behalf, who stands up for us. He is our Savior. He is our Lord, okay? So 
I believe those are some practical things to help us to overcome some sinful habits, to kick them, kick them out of our lives. And then by kicking the bad habits out of our lives, we began to develop good habits, okay? It was G.D. Boardman that said this. You've heard it before. Sow an act and you reap a habit. Sow a habit and you reap a character. Sow a character and you reap a destiny, okay? That's some pretty good advice. Didn't come from Scripture, but some good advice. Sow an act and you reap a habit. Sow a habit and you reap a character. Sow a character and you reap a destiny. Um, I like to look at it uh, like this. You know, everybody has uh, opinions about things. People hold to opinions. But convictions hold the person. The conviction of God's word being the infallible and errant word of God. The conviction that Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation. The conviction tonight that, uh, that we are going to trust in the Lord with all of our heart, lean not on our own understanding. In all of our ways, we need to acknowledge him and he will guide our paths. Folks, I believe those things are important and will help us to be able to kick some habits, okay? So the challenge for you tonight is to take some of these steps, look at some of this scripture that we looked at tonight, go back to your home tonight, admit to the Lord, hey, Lord, I'm having some issues. Here's some areas that I'm having problems with, and I want you, I need help. And folks, I believe that God will help you. And then begin to develop some good habits. Uh, you know, I, I've heard the old adages and everything. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. And, you know, I've heard people say, well, Brother Jim, that's just the way I am. Well, the last time I checked, the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is the same power that can make a difference in your life and in my life, okay? So let's not sell God short. Let's not put him in a box, all right? So let's be victors tonight over the bad habits in our lives, okay? All right. Let me share some prayer requests with you tonight, and then we will close down tonight. I shared a couple of the new uh, additions. Thomas uh, got hold of the prayer list tonight, so uh, he, he changed it up just a little bit. But up at the top, Vera May and Darlene Cecil have the COVID. Uh, pray for them. Um, Vonda Absher, who is, she's a member of our church. She lived in Vanita at one time and would come to our Sunday morning services she has moved to Tulsa in the last couple of years, but Vonda is in ICU at Hillcrest South in uh, Tulsa, and I don't know everything, but Carolyn told me that she was not doing well, and so we need to remember Vonda tonight. So if you would pray for her, Vonda Absher. Ray Geis, who is one of our church members, had eye surgery, I believe it was yesterday, and so we want to remember him. Uh, Michael Double D had a, has a brother-in-law that passed away from covid and has a niece in Virginia that is an ICU. Um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, has a niece by, by the name of Virginia that is an ICU at Mercy Hospital in Joplin, okay? And then uh, Brother Thomas's uh, brother, Bobby Nelson, his wife and two daughters, uh, evidently have all got the COVID, so we want to remember that family tonight in our prayers. Uh, as far as our church family, um, Alan Bruns with our, his ALS disease. Mark Clark is going to be having some upcoming surgery. Uh, I've already mentioned Michael Double D. Richard Egbert, uh, they, uh, he and Carolyn are members of our church, but they have recently moved to Wichita, Kansas. He is recovering at home from COVID. The whole Graham family, Wayne and Ruth and Samantha, they've all tested negative, so they're trying to get uh, over that. I just talked to Pat Griffith a while ago. He's at home healing. And he sounded really good a while ago. Uh, in fact, his wife said he was getting ornery, so that leads me to believe that he's getting well. Uh, Gene Grounds is having radiation treatments in Joplin. Jerry Hamm will have some tests on the 18th of uh, this month. Uh, they're going to go down and look. They diagnosed him with a hole in his heart that he's had for many years. They've ruled out the MS and some of the other stuff. But they are doing this test to see, you know, what, what's the deal with his heart and some other things. So remember Jerry. 
Uh, Tina Henry continues to do chemo treatments uh, for liver cancer in Tulsa. Um, uh, Sandy Killian, and I don't know, Sandy may possibly be watching tonight. Uh, if she is, uh, Sandy continues to rehab from her stroke in Broken Arrow. Uh, Stephanie Plummer uh, is recovering from COVID. Uh, Charlene Pritchard, as I shared with you a while ago, she's at MD Anderson uh, undergoing some more treatment. She has been very weak in the last several weeks. Uh, she just hadn't been able to get her strength back. So remember Charlene especially tonight. The Schilt family has been dealing also with COVID. Um, uh, our, our missionaries and residents, so let's remember them tonight. Uh, let's see, Jarrett Turney, uh, he's having his chemo treatments. They found cancer in his uh, hip. Uh, pray for him tonight if you would, please. Uh, on the family and friends, I uh, won't mention all of these. Uh, this Becky Brewer uh, should have had her ankle surgery. Her son has leukemia. Let's remember that situation. Uh, we've also been praying, let's see, I wanted to, Judy Jolly, uh, Jarvis Dawson. This is Denise Glenn's dad. I believe her mother, uh, Denise's mother, is really struggling with dementia. Uh, so let's pray for that situation. Uh, we've been uh, mentioning a Tammy Ruhlman out in California with stage 4 lung cancer. And then a dear friend of mine, Carl Whitlock, who is in uh, San Diego, California. He uh, goes through dialysis three times a week. So let's remember him in our prayers. And then Brother Tony Zenai asked us to remember a granddaughter, Jacqueline Bolton. Uh, her family is having some issues tonight. And so he has asked for prayer uh, for that family. Uh, and any time parts of our family are hurting we hurt as well as human beings so let's remember that so these are the individuals that uh, I wanted to mention to you there may be some others that I didn't name uh, personally but they are on the list let's continue to pray that's something that you and I can do and so I ask you to do your part in praying for these tonight and remember them we'll keep you updated uh, on these situations, okay? Again, appreciate you being here tonight. I'm going to close this in a word of prayer. Uh, you're welcome to, uh, uh, to pray there in your seat. Uh, you will be dismissed after I dismiss this in a word of prayer. So let's close for dismissal. Father, we live in a very uh, unsure world today. There's a lot of things that we can't trust and hold on to. And Father, when we have been deceived by this world, the trust factor uh, becomes difficult. Father, I'm praying tonight, I know that there is a virus out there and there is a pandemic that's affected a lot of people. We've had a significant number of people who have passed. We've seen two of our own church members in the last two weeks. I lift up, again, um, uh, Mary Salt's family tonight. We will be uh, having her graveside service tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock at Southwest City Cemetery. I lift up uh, her family tonight. They are grieving uh, she was a very special lady, and I thank you, Father, for the opportunity to, to have known her. But, Lord, she, uh, her family's struggling and, and dealing with a loss tonight. There are other families across this country, some who have lost multiple uh, family members. Lord, I just I visited with an individual this past week that doesn't even understand what's going on in life. They, they had a lot of anger about the loss of a loved one. And so, Father, this is an opportunity right now for us as believers to share Christ, to show to them that Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life. We don't have to fear this life. And, Lord, I certainly, um, you know, I, I certainly enjoy my family. I enjoy my church family. 
Uh, I'm kind of like the little boy who was asked one day to go to, if he wanted to go to heaven in Sunday school, he didn't lift up his hand because he thought they were getting a group to go that day. Uh, but Lord, I, I, I want to be ready to meet you. And whenever that happens, we know that life is brief. Our time here on this earth is limited. And so, Lord, that means our commitment to you is essential. So, Lord, use this time for us to be able to share Christ so that people will know beyond a shadow of a doubt that they are a believer, that they have trusted in Christ. And, Lord, maybe through this study tonight of bad habits, situations in our life, we realize that, Lord, maybe we are uh, in a backslidden condition as a believer. We're not allowing the power of Christ to move in our lives to make a difference. We're giving in to temptation. We're allowing Satan to have a heyday in our lives. Lord, help us to begin a separation from the world. We have to be in it, but we don't have to be of it. Help us, Lord, to be set apart not that we're better than anybody else, but that, Lord, you want us for service to be able to make a difference in our family, in our friends, our church family, and our neighbors around us. Father, forgive us for making idols in our lives, for having bad habits. Help us, Lord, to say no to the enemy and to say yes to you. Father, I pray that you would encourage each and every person that has either listened online or is here tonight in this place. Lord, every one of us struggle with sin. We struggle with temptation. We struggle with being who we need to be in Christ. So, Father, help us to appropriate the power that's there. And, Lord, if there's somebody listening tonight who realizes maybe for the first time or knows deep down that they've never trusted in Christ. They've never admitted their sin and they've never believed upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They've never asked him into their heart and repented of their sins. Lord, I pray that today might be that day of salvation. So Lord, you do a great work. Again, thank you for these who are here. This prayer request list, these are people that we love and that we care about Father, meet the needs that are there, and we'll give you the glory. And we ask this prayer and all prayers in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You are dismissed. Thank you for being here.